ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاتي ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرُ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرَ الْهُدَى هُدَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَالشَّرَّ الْأُمُورُ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٌ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٌ wa kulla dalalatin fin nar amma ba'd the khutbah for today inshallah we will look into the differences between us and them us here is referring to muslims and them referring to the ahmadis or the qadianis inshallah we will briefly look into the differences between the muslim and the ahmadis From the beginning of creation Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam. The religion of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Islam is constantly under attack both internally and externally. Up to the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the kafirs never ceased to fight the deen to put off the divine light of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained a bright future for this deen al-Islam. That is why if you read Surah As-Saf Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said huwa allazi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al-haq liyuzhirahu ala din kulli It is Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the religion of truth liyuzhirahu ala din kulli it will supersede and overpower all other ways of life Walau kariha al-mushrikun even the idol worshipers are not happy with that So Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised to protect and preserve this deen al Islam. But the sunnah of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he made human beings. He made Muslims to protect his deen. That is why if you go further in Surah As-Saf Surah 62 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala Surah 60 Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kunu ansar Allah كما قال عيسى بن مريم للحواريين من انصار الى الله قال الحواريون نحن انصار الله فعامن الطائفه من بني اسرائيل وكفر الطائفه فعيدنا الذين امنوا على عدوهم فاصبحوا ظاهرين الله سبحانه وتعالى قال للمؤمن دي بيليفرز يا ايها الذين امنوا كونوا انصار الله بي هيلبرز اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى بي هيلبرز ان دي كورس اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى تو بي هيلبرز اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى ذات از in itself in fact we are helping ourselves because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not need us that is why if you go to surah az-zariyat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention and state the purpose of creation surah az-zariyat verse 56 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa liya'budun ma uridu minhum min rizq wa ma uridu an yuti'mun inna Allah huwa ar-razzaq Allah said in this verse he did not create mankind and he did not create jinn kind except that they should worship him That worship is not beneficial to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not in need of it. That is why he said ma'uridu minhum min rizq. I am not seeking provision from you. O ma'uridu ayyu ti'muni and I am not seeking you to provide me with food. Inna Allah huwa ar-razzaq. He is the one who provides. So this this din al-Islam it is upon us 
to protect it. It is upon us to preserve it. If we don't do it, he will replace us with people who will do the job. Part of the attack that is constantly coming to Islam from the non-believers among them because they have realized that open confrontation with Islam proves a frustrating misadventure. Now they result into creating confusion within Muslims, creating sects which deviate from the part of the Sunnah, which deviate from the part of Islam. Among the self, among the groups that were created to mislead and deviate people from the part of Al-Islam is the Qadiani sect called the Ahmadiyya movement, Jamaat. This Jamaat, we will briefly look into the differences between their belief, their aqidah, and that of the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaat, and that of the aqidah of the Muslims. This religion, Qadiani, or we call them the Ahmadis, the movement was created by Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was born in Qadian, in India. If you look into his life history, he was born in 1830 or 1833, thereby. But as he was propagating his own ideology, his own philosophy, in, 1840, in 1884, he claims to be a Mujaddid, a reformer. Gradually, he changed. In 1891, he claims to be the Mahdi or the Messiah. He said, no matter who's supposed to come during the last hour or during the last day, towards the end of time. And in 1901, he claims to be a prophet. So if you look into his life history, he keep on changing. Before he said he's a Mujaddid, then he was Masi. Then finally he said he's a messenger, he is a prophet sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the belief of Muslims, that is the first difference between us and them. The belief of Muslims, the entire Muslim ummah, belief that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam is the last and final messenger. There will be no prophet and there will be no messenger after him. The evidences are numerous. This is the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The evidences from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from the Ijma of all the scholars is that Muhammad sallallahu wa is the last and final prophet. There will be no prophet, there will be no messenger after him. We know that the sources of Islamic aqidah, where you derive authority, where you derive evidences from, in Islamic aqidah, there are three. First, Quran, the second one is Sunnah, or Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The third one is the Ijma of scholars. We will briefly go through all these sources of Islamic legislation over the Islamic Aqidah to prove that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last and final prophet. There will be no prophet, there will be no messenger after him. First, from the Quran, the first ayah, there are more than almost 100 verses of the Quran which all unequivocally stated that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the last prophet. There will be no prophet after him. The first ayah, if you go to Surah Maida, Surah number 5, verse number 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated that this deen al-Islam is perfect and complete. We are not in need of any other way of life. We are not in need of any other revelation. We are not in need of any other wahi. The deen is perfect and complete. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa said, in, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa said, Al yawma akmal tulakum dinakum. Maida verse 3. Al yawma akmal tulakum dinakum. Wa atmam tu alaykum ni'mati. Wa radhi tulakum un islam adina. Allah subhanahu wa said in this verse, Maida verse 3, This day I have perfected my religion. I have completed my favor upon you. And I have chosen Islam as a way of life. The deen is perfect and complete. That is why in the tafsir of this ayah, Ibn Kathir, he said, this ayah is one of the greatest blessings to this ummah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected his religion. He perfected his deen and his favor upon this ummah. They are not in need of any other prophet. There will be no prophet after him. Because what will be the use of the prophet if the deen is perfect and complete? And the deen is preserved. The deen will not be corrupted. So we are not in need of any religion. We are not in need of any wahi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take the responsibility upon himself that he will protect and preserve this deen. 
inna nahnu nazalna zikra we are the one who revealed this quran wa inna lahu lahafizun and we will protect it from corruption the deen is perfect and complete and it is protected from corruption so that we are not in need of any religion the second verse if you go to surah al imran surah number 3 verse 81 to 82 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in this verse that he took covenant. He took a pledge from all the prophets. Wa is akadha Allahu misaka nabiyin. Lama ataitukum min kitabin wa hikma. Summa jaakum rasul musaddikul lima maakum. La tu'minun nabihi wa la tansurunna. Kala akraltum wa akastum ala zalikum isri. Kalu akralna kala fashadu wa namakum mina sahidin. Wa man tawalla ba'da zalika fawleka humul fasikun. In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And remember the covenant, the pledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from all the prophets. After giving you kitab, after giving you the book and hikmah, afterwards there will come a messenger. The evidence in this verse is this particular portion. Summa means afterwards. There will, be, there will come a messenger. The scholars have stated that that messenger is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When will he come? He will come after all the prophets, because Allah subhanahu wa taala took covenant from all the prophets, and He told them, "Afterwards, I will send a messenger." If the messenger will be sent afterwards, so a prophet cannot be sent after him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah said, "Faman tawalla baada zalik, whosoever turns against this covenant, fa ulaika humul fasikun." He is from among the rebellion. So this verse explicitly, that is why if you go into, if you go into the tafsir of this ayah in tafsir ibn Kathir and tafsir ibn Jaril at Tabari, he said Ali ibn Abi Talib and Abdullah ibn Abbas, all of them said from this verse that the last one who Allah never sent a prophet, but he took a covenant from him, a pledge from him that if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sent during your lifetime, you have to accept him as a prophet. That is why if you read the hadith in Musnad Imam, Imam Ahmad, when Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, who came to the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam with some pages of Tawrat, he begins to read it to Prophet sallallahu wa sallam. The Prophet got angry. And he said to Umar radiallahu an, that, I came with that which is plain and clear. That is this din al-Islam. Law anna Musa kana hayya, if Musa is alive today, he will have no option but to follow me. Because this is the covenant Allah SWT took from all prophets that if Muhammad is sent, you have to follow him. So this explicitly establishes that there cannot come a prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The other ayah, the second, the third evidence from the Quran. There are more than 100 verses that you can quote from the Quran. From the third of his evidence, Allah SWT said in Surah Baqarah from the beginning, Alif Lam Mim Zalik al Kitabu la Reba fi Hudan lil Mutakin, Aladina Yumina bil Raib, wa Yuki Muna Salah, wa Mimma Razak Nakum, Yum Fikun, wa Ladina Yumina bima Unzila Ileka, wa Ma Unzila Min Kablik, wa Bil Akirati Hum Yukinun, Ulaika Allah Hudan Mir Rabbi Him, wa Ulaika Humul Muflihun. In this verse, Allah SWT said, Alif Lam Mim Zalik al Kitab. This is the book, Al Quran. La Reba fi, there is no doubt in it. Hudan lil Mutakin, it is guidance for those with taqwa. Al Lazina yu minuna bil Ghaib, those who believe in the unseen. Wa yuqimuna salah, and they establish salah. O mim mara zakna hum yun fiqun, and they give out charity. That is zakat. Wa Lazina yu minuna bima unzila ilayk, and they believe in that which was revealed before you. And they believe in that which was revealed to you, Muhammad sallallahu wasallam. O ma unzila min kablik. And they believe in that which was revealed before you. This is where the evidence is. The question now is the Quran, we know that it is unabrogated. It is infallible. There is no error in it. And the message will continue till eternity. If there will come a wahi, a revelation, after Muhammad sallallahu wasallam, the question we are going to ask the Qadianis is that, Will that message, will that wahi be mentioned in the Quran or not? If there will come a wahi after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
Will that not be part of the Quran? Will that not even be sanctioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That believers must believe in the wahi that will come after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there is any. The reason why it is not sanctioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that such a wahi does not exist and will never exist. That is why the condition that what you are asked to believe from the wahi, alladhina yumiuna bima unzila ilayk, that which was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ma unzila min kablik, and that which was revealed before him. Does it mention that which will reveal be, I mean, that which will be revealed after him? Does it mention? Does the verse mention that? The answer is no. It's not mentioned anywhere. So this proves that there will be no wahi. There will be no revelation after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And similar verses are many in the Quran. If you go to Surah Nisa, Surah four, verse one thirty-six. يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا بالله ورسوله والكتاب الذي نزل على رسوله والكتاب الذي أنزل من قبل ومن يكفر بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر فقد دل دلالا بعيدا. In this verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, يا أيها الذين آمنوا O you who people O you people believe who believe O you who believe آمنوا بالله ورسوله believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His Messenger. والكتاب الذي نزل على رسوله and believe in the kitab, the wahi, the book which was revealed to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. والكتاب أنزل على قبل and the kitab that was revealed before him, that was revealed before him. Does it mention a kitab or a wahi that will be revealed after him? The answer is no. It means such a wahi will not exist and will never exist. لكن الراسخون في العلم. If you go again further in Surah Nisa verse one six. 162 لكن الراسخون في العلم منهم والمؤمنون يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك and from the people of knowledge from amongst them the Jews and the believers they believe in that which was revealed to you Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and they believe in that which was revealed before you all these verses shows that there will be no revelation after Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم from the Quran Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said the cardinal message of all prophets is to call people to Tawheed and prohibit them from Shirk. That is why if you go to Surah Nahal, Surah 16, verse 36. وَلَقَدِ بَعَسْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَجِتَنِبُ التَّعْبُدُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said He sent to every Ummah, to every nation a messenger. And that messenger, the role, the responsibility of the messenger is to call people to Tawheed and to prohibit them from Shirk. This is the message of all the prophets. Now when Allah SWT talks about the message of Tawheed, when he speaks about the message of Tawheed in the Quran, if you go to Surah Anbiya, Surah 21 verse 25, Allah SWT said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُهُ إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعَبُدُونَ I have not revealed. He is speaking to who? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I have not revealed to, a, to any messenger before you. But what I reveal unto him is that there is none worthy of worship except me. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So worship me alone. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention any revelation that will come after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The answer is no. And this message is supposed to be the message of all the prophets. If they are... So, supposed to be a prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that will also be his message. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Tawheed, he said he did not reveal to any prophet before him. And he did not make mention of any prophet that will come after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which also proves that he is the last and final prophet. There will be no prophet after him. If you go to Surah Zumar, Surah 39, verse 65, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about what? Shirk. That shirk, Prohibiting people from committing shirk is the message of all the prophets. We have revealed unto you and those who come before you. The verse did not mention anyone that will come afterwards. If anyone commit adultery, associating, Partners with me, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will nullify all your deeds. And you will be from among the losers. All these verses talks about wahi, revelation, 
that came before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that which was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It does not make mention of any wahi that will come after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that explicitly state that there will be no prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There will be no wahi after him sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The most explicit ayah from the Quran which state that there will be no prophet after Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the ayah which is found in Surah Ahzab. If you read Surah Ahzab, Surah 33, verse 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَكَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ In another way of recitation, وَكَاتِمَ النَّبِيِّينَ That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the seal, the last, the end of all prophets. وَكَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ The Ahmadis, Try to play with this verse. Kataman Nabiyin. Makana Muhammad Abahadi Mir Rijaliku. Makana Muhammadun Abahadi Mir Rijaliku. Mulaki Rasulullah wa Kataman Nabiyin. They try to play with it. To concoct certain meaning from this verse, which are far fetched. The verse is not even talking about them. First, they said, Kataman Nabiyin means Afzal. Katam means Afzal, meaning he is the best of the prophets. And they quote the Hadith, where the Prophet said, I am Katamul Ambiya. And Ali is Katamul Awliya. This hadith is Maudu. Hadith fabricated. It's a lie which was against the Prophet Sallallahu which was made against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was never from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is a lie. They want to rely on that as an evidence. Among the concoction that they do with this ayah, they said Katamul Ambiya means the seal of the prophets. So a seal here meaning the stamp. This, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one who confirmed other prophets that will come after him. So we are going to tell them that your imposter prophet, Gulam Ahmad said he is Katamul Awlad or Katamul Walad of his father. So he used the word Katam. He said he is Katam Awlad. We are asking them, does Katam here means that Mirza is the one who confirmed the children of his father? The answer is no. Well, we don't have time to go into refutation of all these allegations. All these interpolations they do with the Quran. They said also Katam al-Anbiya means Katam means a ring. So Katam Anbiya means the ring of the thing, I mean the ring of the prophets, meaning he is an adornment of the prophets. Again, this is baseless. To refute that, we said the other kira'a of this ayah is katim an nabiyin. Quran, minimum, it has seven different ways of recitation. Most of, most of recitation, seven. It's only Asim who read this verse as katim an nabiyin. The others recited as katim an nabiyin. Katam, yes. It could mean also what? It could mean a ring. But we now ask them the question. The other recitation is Katima Nabiin. Katima does it not, never means erring. Katima Nabiin means the seal of the prophet, the last of the prophet. There will be no prophet after him. That's what it means. So if a verse has different ways of recitation, if you are interpreting it, know that those interpretations must complement each other. They don't contradict each other. If an interpretation contradicts another way of recitation, that interpretation is rejected. That interpretation is an interpolation of the Quran. And they also said Katamul Nabiyin means he Ambiya. Katamul Ambiya. So the Ambiya here, they said, it means the last of the law bearing prophets. So they created and concocted a new terminology called law bearing prophets and non law bearing prophets. They said Katamul Nabiyin means the last of law bearing prophets. The response to that is that we challenge them to produce a single verse from the Quran. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make distinction of law bearing prophet and non law bearing prophet? It never exists. We don't have time to go into the details. Akuli kawali haza astakhirullah ali wa lakum wali sa'il al muslimina min kulli dham wa astakhiru inna hu huwa al ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillah. والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد 
the time does not allow us to go through all the evidences that are there from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we can just go through them briefly. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in an authentic hadith recorded by Imam Bukhari, hadith 3535, Imam Muslim, hadith 2270, 2286. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, my similitude, hadith of Abu Huraira, he said, my similitude and that of the prophets who come before me is like a man who built a nice, beautiful house. When people enter the house, they are amazed with the beauty of the house, except that that house has a space of a single brick. A single brick, meaning the house is complete, but there is a space for what? A single brick. Now listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, Fa ana labina, I am that brick, wa ana kataman nabiyin, and I am the last of the prophets. The house, is it complete now? The answer is yes. That brick, that brick is already filled. There is no space for any other individual. Another hadith, hadith Anas ibn Malik, mentioned in Sunnah Tilmizi, hadith 2272. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna risalata wa La Rasul, la Badi, wa la Nabi. Messengership and prophethood ended, terminated. There will be no prophet after me, and there will be no messenger. I want a hadith. Abu Huraira, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Fudil to Ambiya, sitting. I am giving superiority over all the prophets in six aspects." He mentioned the six. The last five he mentioned. The, the fifth one, he said, "Wa ursil tu ilal qalqi qafa wa khuti madbiyan Nabiyun." I am sent to the entire mankind, and I am the and I am the seal of the prophets. Prophethood ended upon me. Another hadith, Thawban, the hadith is recorded by Muslim. If you go to Sahih Muslim, or this hadith that I quoted is from Sahih Muslim, hadith 523. Also recorded by Tilmizi, hadith 1553. Hadith Thawban is recorded in Sunnah Tilmizi, hadith 2219. Also, Sunnah Abu Dawood, Hadith 4252. The Prophet said, In this Hadith, the Prophet said, They will come unto you, Salathun, 30, Kazzabun, Liars, Dajjalun, they are Dajjal. Each of them will claim to be prophets, but I am the seal of the prophets. There will be no prophet that will become after me. Tilmizi said this hadith is Hassan Sahih. Also another hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu hadith of Sa'ad, that is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. Sahih Bukhari, hadith 44, 16, 4416. In Sahih Muslim, it's also reported by Muslim. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Ali ibn Abi Talib when he was going to Tabuk. Ali told him, Ali ibn Abi Talib told him, you are going to leave me in Medina. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left Ali in Medina to be in charge of Medina while he is going to Tabuk. Ali told him, so you are going to leave me here with women and children? He told Ali, are you not happy that you are unto me like Harun is to Musa Alaihi Salaam? Except that there will be no prophet after me. Hadith of Jubair ibn Mut'im, also recorded in Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari 53, I mean 35, 32. In Muslim 23, 54. The Prophet said, I am giving five names. Allah gave me five names. Ana Muhammad, I am the one who is praised. Wa Ana Ahmad, I am the one who praise Allah. Wa Ana Mahi, I eliminate. Infidelity. Wana Hasir, I am the one who will be resur resurrected first. Wana Aqib, I am the last of all prophets. There will be no prophet after me. That's what Aqib means. It's one of the names of the Prophet. Al-Aqib, meaning he is the last of the prophets. Also, hadith of Abu Musa al Asari mentioned in Sahih, Book, Sahih Muslim, hadith 2255. The Prophet said, Ana Muhammad Ahmad. Al-Mukafi. Al-Mukafi means the last in succession. Prophets were coming. The last of them is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now all these verses, all these hadiths, over 200 hadiths, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying continuously, I am the last of the prophet. There will be no prophet after me. Ahmad is rejected all these hadiths. They rejected all these verses. 
Now, what is the Ijma of scholars? Musaylam al Kazab. You see, there are people who come before Ghulam Ahmad, who claim prophethood before Ghulam Ahmad. Among them, Musaylam ibn Kazab. Musaylam al Kazab. Musaylam al Kazab. He, during the lifetime of the Prophet, he claims to be a prophet. Meanwhile, he believed that Prophet is a prophet. But he was killed as a kafir. Is the Prophet who calls him Al Kazab, the liar? But he prays. If you go to Tariq of At Tabari, he said he prays. And then also they pray with, with Ikama and Azan. And they said, Washhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. And when that is mentioned, Musaylam, we said, Yes, Muhammad sallallahu is indeed a messenger of Allah. But with all that, he was killed as a kafir. And that is the ijma of all the scholars from the Sahaba, from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahaba, all. That is why Qadi Iyad in his kitab, as Shifa, he said Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last prophet. Anyone who claim, claim prophethood after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that individual is a kafir outside the fall of Islam. He said this, there is ijma qati, meaning there is ijma from the time of the Sahabas up to this day. Every century, there is ijma. There is no difference of opinion that anyone who claims prophethood is a kafir and anyone who believes that person also is a kafir. Even if you pray and then you, you, I mean, you, you say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. With all that you are a kafir. Because the evidence are numerous, are mutawatir. Let us end the kutbah with the statement of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad himself. What he said in this subject. Ghulam Muhammad first, let's go to his kitab, Hakikatul Wahi. If you read Hakikatul Wahi, page 171. You are all literate, go to the internet, type Hakikatul Wahi, download the book. Go to page 171, you will see it. Ghulam Muhammad said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam. After him, he sent prophets and messengers. The last of all, he sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who said that? Ghulam Ahmad. Go for it again in the same book, Hakikatul Wahi, page 816. Ghulam Ahmad said, Indeed, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Katamul Anbiya, and there is no prophet after him. In page 877, Ghulam Ahmad said about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the same book, Hakikatul Wahi, he said, Anyone who claims prophethood after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the person is guilty of is guilty of imposture against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same book, Ghulam Muhammad said, God called him a Nabi, a prophet. You think that he is smart. In fact, indeed he is smart. He said he is a prophet. After all that. But interestingly also, he said, God called him a prophet metaphorically, meaning not haqiqa, not in reality. It's just a name that was given to him, but it's not real. Who said that Ghulam Muhammad? Which book? Haqiqatul Wahi, page 878. Go to the next book, The Truth un Unveiled. Truth Unveiled is a book of Ghulam Ahmad. In page 46, he said, anyone, he said, it is a fundamental principle in Islam that anyone who claims prophet, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the last prophet. He said, this is what? A fundamental principle in Islam. Also in his book, let's end with that. The Heavenly Degree. That is where everything even ends. Ghulam Ahmad said in this book, I profess the kalima la ilaha illallah. This is the exact word of Ghulam Ahmad in the book Heavenly Degree, page 6. He said, I profess that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I profess that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger. And I am not a claimant of prophethood. He said he never claimed to be a prophet. In fact, I, such, I consider such a claimant to be a kafir. Ghulam Muhammad said anyone who claimed to be a prophet, that person is a kafir. And in many other places in his book, he claimed to be a prophet. He said God gave him over one million ayat, over one million signs to show to him that he is indeed a prophet. So this clearly proves that when we said Ahmadis are kafirs, we now ask you the question, who first said Ahmadis are kafirs? Who said that? Ghulam Ahmad himself said Ahmadis are kafirs. Because he said anyone who claimed to be a prophet, the person is a kafir. That is a nomenclature that he gave to himself and to all his followers. We calling them kafirs is not something new. He called himself a kafir. Our differences are many. To summarize, among the differences between us and them, they believe that Isa alayhi salam is dead. Why? Because Ghulam Muhammad claimed to be Isa. He claimed to be the Mahdi. The Mahdi. 
He claimed that Dajjal is not real. He said if you will hear about Dajjal, Dajjal, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talk about Dajjal. In the hadith of Fatima bin Qais, mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called the Sahabas. When Tamim Udari saw Dajjal physically, Mizah Gulam Amar said Dajjal is not something real. In fact, he said the real Dajjal are the Western philosophers and the Christian missionaries. He said, if you hear about Yaju and Maju, these things are not fabrication from his own books. I read them with my two eyes. He said, if you hear about Yaju and Maju, these are who? He said, these are Western nations. The reality of the Hamadis is very clear and explicit. They are kafirs outside the fall of Islam. Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Salah, Zimla, Ilaha, 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 Ilaha